This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, everybody. Oi. On the show today, we caught up with our old mate Matt Preston. He's written a book called Big Mouth. We talk a lot about a salad bowl. <laughs> we certainly do. That gets a really good run, didn't it? What else did we talk about as well? Oh, double whammies. Jeez, they are pretty nasty. Yeah, when you had more than one thing wrong with you at once. Yeah. Plus, what about Danny Green? Mm-hmm. And uh, also... Oh. Like surprising chip flavours. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just the big it's issues a big issue. around here. Huge. This is Nathan, Nathan, Nat, Nat and Sean. Yeah. On Nova. Nova 937. <laughs> <laughs> Three past six. David Atten, Sean. Nathan's back, fresh off a four day long yeah. weekend. Yeah. I just told you something, Nathan. That's funny. I'm outraged. You are outraged. So I just received a gift from um, uh, the Nova family yep. for 15 years in the biz, and you guys received one for 20 years in the biz. Yeah, so, we had to so wait 20 years to get our present. What happens, we're assuming, is um, uh, Lachlan, who owns the business, um, he's got a cupboard and he's got to deal with a guy named. Gay Gail Jensen. Gail Jensen. You might know him as George oh, Jensen. Oh, Gail yeah. Jensen. Everyone gets a George Jensen thing. <laughs> so, Natalie, you received for you 20 years. Uh, um, like a wire bread basket <laughs> and a glass um, carafe with a wooden stopper. And, of course, me, as you know, I, I, have, I have so many celebrations on yachts and other things. Yes. So I got a um, an ice bucket and tong set, a George Jensen. I don't want to open it yet. So it's, it's What do you mean? Go, is it here? At, yeah, Ali, can you bring in the George Jensen, please? I know bring in the George Jensen, Ali. Bring in the gay old Jensen, <laughs> Ali. <laughs> so, uh, it's like a squarey, I won't say square, it's probably more so recta- um, rectangle box. box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fl- it's more flatter than, I guess, it couldn't be an ice bucket What I'm sa- is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, mate. maybe you got the bread basket and glass carafe set. <laughs> really? Grass? That's because mine came in a box that shape. I know, okay, but so also, 20, 20 can we just... No one was moving slower than Ali just Can then. we just revisit the fact that you got this after 15 years and we had to wait 20? So what's that about? Well, I think that's about the fact that they're not going to be around here for 20. <laughs> 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 no, I'd open it up. Open you it up. Know, All right, so, wire bread so, basket. It's so nicely packaged, though. Wire and and Ali redid this for me, too. I've got a ice bucket and tongs. Okay. All right. You've got a George it's Jensen. It's just it's a really, really outrage. It's really well... Um, it's, it's very nicely wrapped. 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 Yes, they've Fantastic used double-sided wrapping. tape. The Murdoch family, they do yes, things well. they do. Okay. Oh, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't show it George around like Jensen that. Established in 1904. Copenhagen. Rip it open. You're not covering books in the paper. Oh, it's so nicely yeah. done, mate. I didn't want to do it. What did you get? Did you get a salad bowl? What is that? It's a salad bowl. got a salad bowl and wooden tongs. Sean! Sean, you won! Is that no it? No way, really? You know why? Because that's something we've used. Actually, you. <laughs> it's a salad bowl, really? It's a salad bowl. Okay. Open a salad bowl with, with wooden tongs. By Otherwise. appointment to Her Majesty and the Queen of Denmark. Yes. Jorge Lorenzo. I mean, George Jensen. What are you doing? Dale Jensen. Can, Can you not open, open anything? Oh, are you serious? Have you never it's encountered a done. box before? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Okay, I've look. opened it. Oh, oh no. it's a silver oh. Natalie. That's a dog bowl. It's a silver, silver bowl <laughs> with that two is wooden dog spoons. Well, can your dog use tongs? <laughs> like no, I'm not saying they're part of. It's a good wood sniff it. Okay, yeah. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> it's quality wood. <laughs> mm, it's got you a quality wood it, smell. <laughs> that is a, is that a dog's bowl? It's Nathan. no. Oh, well, I've, yes. my dog, my Natalie. dog doesn't have meals that big, so no. It does look like a dog bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, is that a salad? Is that oh, no joke? A salad but also, bowl. It's, I know it's, it's not the tongs, but it's a salad it's bowl with it's tongs. Of course, it, of course, it's what, a what salad bowl. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, I understand the sticks thing, but if you've been to anyone's house, Harry, you get yeah, involved here. Yeah, that's because your and, friends and aren't fancy enough. Nobody's a, friends has to have bloody a salad bowl. Or Jensen salad bowl. No one has friends that has a salad bowl like that. It's a dog bowl. I'm not sure I want to be here for 15 years anymore. What if you could book your hotel now and choose to pay? when you get there. With thousands of flexible booking options in select stays, you're only a what if away from your next holiday. Book on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? Come on, what energy? Up for grabs, we've got 500 bucks thanks to Harvey Beef. All our contestants have to do is identify the title of the songs that we have sped up. Yeah, Tracy and Harry are going to go at it this morning. Good morning to you, first of all. Tracy. Come on, what 
Good morning. How are you guys? Hey, Trace. Oh, fantastic. Trace, up early. Is this normal yeah. for you? Yes, very early. Up at about quarter to five in the morning to get ready. Oh, get ready for get what? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> to go <laughs> to get ready to go to work. So mm. I come to my friend's place and she drives us into work. Oh, oh wow. Wow. that's nice. Awesome. Carpooling. Yeah. Lovely Good stuff. Yeah. It's pretty early though, yeah. Trace. Jeez. Yeah. Totally early. I'm gonna nap by about eight o'clock at night. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah we cool. hear you. Uh you're going yeah. against Harry from Mirawa. Hi Harry. Hi, how's it going? Good, Harry. You're up early as well. Is this normal for you? Uh, actually, a bit of a lion this morning. I'm usually <laughs> up at half four. By what choice it, or what, for, yeah, for work? What are you doing? Nah, for work, yeah. yeah. What do you do, Harry? Uh, I'm an electrician. Ah. Uh. It's like that when I drive here in the morning, right? So I'm getting here mm. about... So I'm driving past that gym that we yep. drive past here, yep. probably about 4.25, mm. yep. and there are people going in there. Mm. And I'm just like... Sick? What are you doing? <laughs> like, who gets out of bed and then goes and works out? That, <laughs> to me, blows my mind. Yeah, that's a normal talk. And then out. they go and do their day. I, I would need to go home and sleep. walking the dog at that. It's I insane yeah, that. to me. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, what electrician gets up at 4.30, though, Harry? This that's... one. This one. Harry. Harry. Oh, I've got about an hour drive to go. So oh, okay. I drive down south. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. There you go. Here's the answer now. Well, um, I hope your ears are perked up and ready. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to play you a beefed up banger. That's a song that's been sped up. Your job is to buzz in with your name and tell us the title of the song. We don't need the artist, just the title. Uh, you get it right, you take that round. You get it wrong, we'll keep going and you're both still in play. Uh, it is the best of five. Let's test your buzzers. Tracy? Tracy? Harry? Harry. Working well. No. Okay. Raquel. Okay. Uh, hey, let's do Beefed Up Banger number one. You ready? Have a listen. Mm. They can't be singing any clearer. <laughs> we play this song on a daily basis. Tracy? A good thing? No. No. No, it's not. Will, will we keep going, no. Amy? Or? It's about no, the size no. of something. No. Put them out of their misery, please. Okay. Now. It's Lil no, Boothang. No, put us out of their misery. Lil Boothang, which is like... Harry, we're thing. playing this every day, three times <laughs> yeah. at least. Yeah. Okay, it's nil all. We could be in for a long battle. We are okay, everybody, because they will get banger number two. All right, let's hit it. Oh, Harry. Harry? Oh, the small thing. Yes, oh, Harry. There he is. There he is. You know what? I had every one of the Chipmunks albums growing up. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I did, and that Loved is them. just reminding me why. What joy. Oh, it is joyful. <laughs> Harry, you lead one nil. Okay, time for round three. No. Well, it's not the name. It's, no. not, the, it's wow. not the title of the song. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Are we going to go again? Are we going to end we'll, it? We'll keep going. Keep going yep. a little bit longer. Yep. A lot of songs these days just have one word titles. You know Harry. that? Harry? Is it addicted to the rock? No. no. A wow. lot of songs these days have one word titles. Yes. Too disappointing for me. Can we jump in? No, I want to yes. play the entire track. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Harry. Uh, yes, Harry. 
Is it Rush? Oh, yes, Harry. Oh, Harry. It is just Rush. As I said, some songs only have one word as the title. <laughs> Troy Savan. This is a... Member of Dinella. I'm, I'm loving yes, this yes. round. I love it. Harry leads 2 0. <laughs> Harry, you can time. seal it with, ra- this, with what? <laughs> this song. All right. It's time for. I reckon this will be on Harry's playlist for okay. sure. All right, let's hit it. Tracy? Yes, Tracy. <gasps> Sex on fire. Oh, yeah! Tracy's on the board. Yeah! She's on the board. All right, Tracy has scored one. Harry's still on two. I'm All exhausted. Right. We're going to go to round five. Tracy. <laughs> Cold Heart. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go, go we've gone that's we've we've gone through five rounds. It's two all. We are gonna go <laughs> to our tiebreaker. Tiebreaker rules apply. That means uh, once you hear the beefed up banger, if you buzz in with your name and you you get it right, you win. Yep. You get it wrong, your opponent wins. Okay. Test your buzzers. We'll test your buzzers. Tracy. Tracy. Harry. <laughs> Harry. <laughs> All right, everybody. Okay. Here is the final beefed up banger. Go. Tracy. Tracy for the win. Eye of the tiger. Oh, 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 oh. With a little bit of sass at the end. Yes. Tracy. Well done, oh, you Tracy. Came, you came home strong and you've scored five hundred dollars thanks to our mates at Harvey Beef. Trace, well played. Oh yeah, thank you. It, it was there for the well win, done, Harry. Bad luck, bud. Oh, God, how much well quicker done, would this show have gone if we play the song at that speed? I know, <laughs> right? Even now talking at that speed would be good. Oh my God. Yes, what? We're playing beefed up bangers again tomorrow, everybody. Do your homework. This is the Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Just want to give a uh, shout out to a guy that I was driving hi- driving behind this morning when I was going to work. He's just a normal white sedan, mm-hmm. but had private number plates. I never got private number plates. No. Did you now? Never. Did you, Sean? No, I haven't. What would you think would be on yours, Nat? Um, you like heaps of different things. Yeah, I do. Like something about typewriters. Typewriter. <laughs> typewriter. <laughs> typewriter. Or something about gin, wouldn't it be? Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would yours be, Sean? Something about the dockers, maybe? Well, I do have... Uh, f- I was given free amount of ones, but I, uh, my mum has them. Mm. Oh, please. Right. So, I mean, so um, yeah. that's an interest of yours. And yes. That's an interest of yours. Yes, I yes. knew exactly what this guy was interested in. It said mi- simply... Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> so do we think the artist or do we think he just really loves the dish? There's some guy out there that either loves meatloaf so much he decided that's going to be the statement about yeah. him or it's the singer meatloaf. It can't be, Could the, be singer. the singer. It can't. Could it has, be the singer. has to be meatloaf. The, but do people out there really love meatloaf? Well, Is that his nickname? Yeah. Maybe. Did it, it look like meatloaf? Name. I did well, not can, see him. Mm. I just saw the back of his head. Did he just famously look, sort of look like a sausage? Has he, <laughs> oh, I well, know that. Then it would be sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Perth's biggest concert event of 2023 is nearly here. I will play. Coldplay. And all you need to be is caller number three. Hello. Oh my god. Nova 937. Coldplay. I was just a few sleeps away. Coldplay this weekend, everybody. Remember, they're coming here and nowhere else. We love we, that. Yeah, we got a call. We're looking for caller number three, and it's yeah. Shah. Oh, Go, Shah. Yeah. Shah, oh you, my go God, Shah. you go to Coldplay. Our new segment, we're joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we stitch people up with a competition Shut and they get nothing. You're like caller it. number two. You're the first winner. You've won nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Did we, did we win the ticket? Yes, yeah, you, you did. did. You won the Shut ticket. Up. Oh, she got excited twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you didn't. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dropping my son off at his um, electrical thing and I was like, oh, no, no, we've got to pull over, we've got to pull over. So he's a bit like, but hey. Tell me, oh, more about your, tell me more about your son's electrical thing. What are we doing? Um... He's doing electrotechnology pre-app um, through the student lock college. Electrotechnology thing. sounds impressive. What does that entail? Is he going to make so robots? To, yeah, no, he wants to be a sparky, so 
Okay. Okay. His work experience this week. I'm oh. so shaky. Sorry. No. Oh, yeah, no. Sure, Danny, fantastic. What are you talking about? So many people were having a crack at that, yeah, and our phone system yeah. nearly melted yeah. down yeah. completely. Yeah. Hey, Sha, we were joking. You haven't won the tickets. <laughs> Oh, no, don't say that. No, Shah, you have won the ticket. Oh, no. <laughs> I got her excited the third time. Oh, my God. Oh, my Shah, God. Shah, the keys I'm giving. Quite the roller coaster, Shah. Um, <laughs> okay. Shah, I'm today. I'll just keep on giving her stuff and taking it away from her. Yes. Oh, my God. Thanks, Shah. Thank you. I've got to drive all the way back to the box right. now. And now drive safely. Yeah, yeah, don't want to miss the concert. Off. Yes, okay. So have fun at Coldplay. <laughs> it's the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. So. Yes. I've always wanted to take a cruise. Have you though? Yeah, I have. The idea you is amazing. About it. You yeah. talked about it. I, yeah. I want to see the fo- well. Follow through is not any of our yeah. things. So and then yes. of course the um, no, whole. So I've never wanted to. The whole COVID situation happened. Yeah. I remember when they were just out at sea and no no <laughs> yes. country wanted to take them. No, no they absolutely. Just moored off the anchored <laughs> off the coast that? of Japan. No I know. one wanted to take them. No. And I was in, I was just out at sea on a ship that like full of disease. They yeah, they wanted to get... I mean, it all started from the COVID ship who, yes. who arrived in Sydney at that yeah, time. And we were just able to... People just wander out. Yeah. So I, I totally understand that. Nathan, so many people I've spoken to recently have like, you've got to go on. I know. You know, don't worry about that thing. Don't worry about it. COVID happened in the but past. But think about it, Get right? on there, have a great it. time. Think about it. very much a thing of the present. Think about it. Your hotel room travels. Yeah. Yes. So while you're sleeping, you're going somewhere else. That's mm. pretty magical, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I oh suppose the same, the same is true with cars, planes, and yes. trains. trains yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's just a, it's a great concept, and I think it'll really catch on. Uh, the, will, it, will it though? The <laughs> princess story cruise grand, uh, the princess cruise grand princess ship docked in Port Adelaide on Monday after a nightmare health breakout oh. swept through two thousand six hundred passengers and fifteen hundred. Oh, sorry, eleven hundred and fifty staff. Gastro. And COVID-19 at the same time. She's a bad combination. <laughs> so one woman said that they didn't tell them straight away what was going on the ship because when you're on a ship, yeah. as we hear, um, if something like this happens, they, they just... <laughs> well, they're, they're, oh, yeah, quick, everyone, look at the buffet. Yeah. Look yes. at the buffet. Yes. 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 Ham. It's a shuffleboard, anyone? <laughs> yeah. So one chick said that um, we had a man two doors down from us who had COVID and gastro. I mean, that's a bad day. <laughs> we didn't know about it. But you could smell it down the hallway. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the thing. You talk like COVID's one thing, and some people do get, get gastro um, symptoms with COVID. But you're on it. Think about it. What's the sewerage sy- system? Yeah. It's all. It's, it stays it's on the all ship. It's on the boat, yeah. isn't it? It's there. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. So that's got to yeah. deal with it, and it's right next yeah. to you. Another oh. person um, that was on the ship that had uh, COVID and gastro at the same time. They said they never saw them. They just saw that that room was served breakfast, lunch, and dinner for ten days straight. <laughs> Ten days straight, that person. What is that person going through? Imagine a camera in that person's room. What are you going through? Oh, so, my yeah. God. And, I mean, a lot of those cabins don't have windows. Yeah, like, no, you have to not. pay extra for the windows. Do you reckon so how many times do you reckon? internal cabin, yeah. it's, it's a dark in. Yeah. little room and yeah. food's just left outside your door for ten days. And every time you cough, you poo yourself. <laughs> 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 that that is like, terrible. No, I want to know. I want to talk to people, right? So COVID-19, mm-hmm. terrible, right? Terrible. Gastro, terrible. terrible. Together, oh, my God. We want to know, um, getting more than once, some, yes. you know, more, more than one thing at once. The double whammy, yeah, basically. Yeah, double whammy, triple, quadruple. How many things did you have go wrong with you in a period of time? I can think of a at, real at small once. one. Uh, when we were in Bali, when, when you jump on a flight and or you stay in a hotel room in the first couple of days, you always get one of those, uh, uh, like, colds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah, yeah, aeroplane colds. Yeah, yeah. So I had a snotty nose and all the rest of it, but I was thinking, oh, I was still out and about because we were in Bali. Yeah. We went surfing and then I cracked a rib straight away. <laughs> So anyway, what that ends up meaning that um, when we went out or at a place, if I was blowing my nose, which I had to do at times, and the or a, pain and or a rib. sneeze, which happened, the pain that went through my wrist, oh, cracking no. a rib, was unbelievable. All right, um, there is unfortunately many things happening with you at once, um, all at the same time. We want to know what they were and how bad it was to deal with. We're going to give somebody. Three hundred dollar voucher to Republic of Fremantle Distilling Co. It awesome. is a great spot. Yes, give someone a gin making experience with a gin school gift voucher from Republic of Fremantle dot com. Done it, and it's brilliant. All right, did you have more than one thing wrong with you at the same time? Sue's in Mindari. Hi, Sue. Hi. 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 What did you get all at once? Well, about four years ago, I suffered a brain hemorrhage. Oh. Um, and I was rushed into hospital 
Um, it's in hospital for four weeks, but the medication they put me on for the pain caused me to have constipation. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. That happens a lot. That's, yeah, so anything with protein that. in it nah. does that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're saying to me, no straining under no my straining. Are you allowed to strain with a brain hemorrhage? So, oh, you're not allowed to strain oh, no with a brain hemorrhage. So what do you what, what do, you do you do, Sue? Well, you don't go for four weeks. So four four weeks. weeks. I was in hospital, couldn't go. But in so much pain with my head, so much pain with my belly. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> in the end, they gave me something called dynamite, and it worked. <laughs> dynamite. Dynamite. So Was wait, it in so, form? So, so during that four during that four weeks, they didn't like funnel it out of you or anything, or, or, or give you some prune no. juice. <laughs> no, no, they tried. They tried all different forms of laxatives. I must have tried every single laxative I've done. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Four weeks, Sean. You know those Play Doh machines where you squeeze and it and the Play Doh comes out of people's noses yeah. and stuff? Yeah. That's a lot of poo in your body there, Sue. That's a lot of poo in your <laughs> body you. there, Sue, Thanks is the sentence you just said. Yeah. I was just thinking, well, you just, the, the Play Doh build up got me. Because, yes. So amazing that you even survived a brain hemorrhage. Like, that is. That can be fatal. Oh, my God. I know. I was very, very lucky. Yeah, so she survived funny, the brain though. hemorrhage but died of constipation. Can you believe that? Oh, oh God. That's, that's a great start, oh, that Sue. One, yeah, that one's got us, Sue, for sure. Thank you. Um, let's go to Kristen in Darling Downs. Hi, Kristen. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Kristen. Kristen. Do you have more than one thing wrong with you at once, Kristen? <laughs> yes. When I was nine, um, I had a broken arm from school. And then I ended up with chicken pox and I had an infected earlobe because I just got my ears pierced. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a triple so she whammy. Had triple whammy. Three. Because my brother had that double <laughs> and I can still remember. I was really little, but I have this memory of him with a knitting needle down the cast mm. To, mm. to scratch the itchy pox on his arm. Yeah, chicken pox. <laughs> the, po- the kids don't get him any oh. days. That upsets well, a, me because we had so many. Can I, know, can I just tell you right now? Can I tell you? The kids kids get all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff these <laughs> mm-hmm. days. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, look how skinny their TVs are and no chicken pox. <laughs> we had fat TVs and pox. <laughs> and, and we didn't have TVs in our bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, thanks, Kristen. Ryan's in Bibber Lake. Hello. How are you going? Hi, Good Ryan. Ryan. Did you have more than one thing wrong with you at once? Yeah, I got hand, foot, and mouth a few years ago. Oh, oh three. <laughs> so I, I hope kid, you've got kids, yeah? Yeah, as a kid, it doesn't really affect them, but when you're an adult, you get covered in blisters, like chicken oh. pox down your throat. Oh, oh no. Yes. The most itchiest thing ever. No. So I was, I was quarantined, oh. and then my testicle exploded from cancer. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> right. What do you mean? Just like, just like suddenly in bed, it just went poof. No, I was watching a movie and then I was like, well, that's a bit painful. And I went to stand up and it just, the most agonising pain I've ever felt. I was home right. alone and I was even swearing and oh. yelling and oh. carrying on. Oh. Oh. I mean, we've oh. got an important oh. question, oh. Ryan. Oh. What what movie were you watching? Uh, Sicario. Mm. Sicario, okay. So that's uh, like a gangster about? movie about the... Yeah. Yep, yep. So, oh, it would have been such so funny if it was a shooting scene. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's... <laughs> right, Ryan, what did you do? So what do you do? You what? You call the hospital, you go in, and then they tell you you've had an exploding testicle. Uh, an ambulance on mm. a Saturday night. Yeah. And so I had some guy doing a scan on my ball sack. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Wasn't how I thought my Saturday was no, going to end. No, 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 no. I mean, you hope, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then they were like, it's cancer, you've got to have it removed. Oh, but how be- terrifying. Because you've got hand, foot, and mouth, you have to wait the pain out for another week before we can operate oh, on God. No. So, so officially, you had hand, foot, mouth, and testicle at the same time. Yeah. That is unbelievable. That oh, is I've dead. never heard of exploding testicles. Are you okay now? I after bet you the, have. After the cancer, Ryan? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they got it all out eventually yeah. and all good. Okay, Six years cool. later. That's good. That's Far fantastic. Out. That's a, what a terrifying oh, one, thing. Uh, that's a nickname down the footy club for sure. Okay, three hundred dollar voucher. Don't rub it in his face. It's right there. <laughs> oh, don't that's rub a... two of them in his face. <laughs> More to the point. Three hundred dollar voucher to the Republic of Fremantle <laughs> Distilling Co. Nat's a cracker, isn't it? Give it is someone a gin making experience with a gin school gift voucher from the Republic of Fremantle. 
Sue, I really like your story, but Ryan's story. It's got to be well, Ryan. It's got to yeah. be Ryan. Ryan. This is coming your way. There you go, mate. It's literally the least Thank we can do. Thank you very do. much. No worries. You have a ball. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> That was great. You see, and the you ball came and in. you were after sensitivity training. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Now, I thought we'd do something really different right now. Yeah. I'm so sick of celebrities making money off books that we're going mm. to read out like, every word of Matt Preston, a memoir, Big Mouth, just so, like, everyone can just hear it so and they have to buy it. Pages. Right, so what, what chapter am I having? Because this, is at, <laughs> least 30, this is at least 30 bucks or something, isn't it? At <laughs> least. At Matt least. Preston, hello. Hello. Oh. Yeah, I, I can tell you, having having read the whole book for the audio book, it takes eight hours. It's a really, really long read. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, I'm not I doing it over time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that, that, that's right. You, you'll be here tomorrow. But even worse than that, when you write a book, the sentences are really long. And when you do radio, they're very short. And so, so reading it means you have to take the world's largest ah, breath of air before you start. But yeah, <laughs> all, all you hear in the book is sounding me, me wheezing, going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Preston, um, that's enough from you. All right, let's begin. Okay. Prologue. <laughs> it's the spring of 2008, and I'm standing in a teaching kitchen at Box Hill TAFE with a couple of Melbourne chefs, Guy Grossi and... Gary, Gary Megan. never heard of him. Um, I tell you what, <laughs> oh, okay. it is actually really well even... written, Presto, and this is no surprise because you were a journalist, yeah. you were a writer first, and right. it, it shows. You, it, it is a rollicking good read. Well, I'm, I'm glad because the thing, the thing you forget with most memoirs is they're not written by the person. So that makes it, yeah. you know, they're written by a ghostwriter, so mm. the story is kind of it's kind of retold. And I think what what I find so interesting, but also so confronting about writing is. If you write stuff and you go, is that really true? And you go, oh, no, actually, it probably wasn't. I need to be more honest. So, so that, that's been the challenge in the book is, you know, going, stopping and just said, no, no, you didn't really feel like that. It wasn't great. It was actually painful. Or alternatively, it wasn't really painful. Actually, it was fine. And, and that, that's kind of, that's been good therapy for me. Good yeah. Therapy. Hey, Matt, every, when you look online and see all the stories written about you, one that jumps out straight away, particularly about the book, is everyone wants to focus on the fact that um, uh, you had to come clean to your kids at the airport about uh, being adopted. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that, that's right. Well, my, my, you know, the classic way that... Yeah. The, the classic way that the kids are really sharp. My, my daughter, talking to my wife about, about where, my, where my second um, birth certificate was, and my daughter just said, why have you got two birth certificates? You must be adopted. That is more. And it's like... Well, okay, I've never told you this. Let me tell you the whole story. <laughs> yeah. we're, in, we're, we're standing at, at, you know, at the gates for Jet Star. There's a million people, holiday makers, screaming kids. It's like the really the worst, worst possible moment, worst possible place to reveal deep held family secrets. <laughs> but actually, there's never a good time for it. It was, a, it was actually the perfect time, and it's the perfect place really to start the book and go, well, okay, we need to go back to what your, yeah. what your grandparents got up to, what your, what your grandmother got, what my grandparents got up, what your grandmother got up to. And, and reveal all that stuff, and it's a, it's a, there's never a right time to do that. But I think there's also you just got to do it. And what I found the fascinating thing about this book, there are lots of kind of scandally stuff. And you go, oh, that was quite unique. But the number of people, friends who go, oh my gosh, well this happened to me, and suddenly we're talking about stuff that they've not talked about. So it's been a, a very a kind of a commonly cathartic experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Um, writing a memoir at the moment, saying the same thing. I was pretty excited that I'm on page two. <laughs> Yes. Page two. You read so much of the book. Oh, no, 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 no. It only took to page two for you to name one of our heroes, and that is Henry Stride. Oh, yes, Nath. I saw uh, Henry. So yes. Henry's your manager, yes. of course, yeah. but she was also Sam Pang's manager. And, and she's the one that ended up penning a deal for Sam Pang to start a breakfast show at 7am <laughs> and only work two hours. It's legendary in this industry. But she's the reason that you got on MasterChef. Yeah, she was, she was, she was, this is again that, that, you know, when you, those weird sliding moments. So Henry Stride's mum worked in a, in a kindergarten with my mum. <laughs> and when, when Henry Stride was looking to cast chefs, her, her, mom, her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law said, look, you've got to talk to, to Jennifer's son, Matthew. He knows a few chefs. So she rang me for advice on what chefs she should cast. Cause they were only looking for two chefs as the judges. They weren't looking for three judges. And about an hour into the phone call, she asked for a photo. I sent a photo. The, the story goes, no CV, no knowledge who I was. They, they just they just liked the, the grubby like the photo. Mm. And they went, bang, we'll, 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 we'll have a third judge. If this guy can speak, we'll, we'll give him a role. So thank you very much, Henry Shrine. So it's a huge part of the story, sirs. And it, respect, respect to you, I think the first person to do that 7am deal was actually Mick Malloy. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. 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 
and and what a brilliant idea! And um, <laughs> oh, I'll, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> don't you? 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 Don't Alfred's Alfred. kitchen. Yes. yes. Was one of my yes. best moments ever. Uh, but it didn't but make it the book. Make the book. So, what so, so, so what you're suggesting, it, it wasn't perhaps one of Matt Preston's best times ever? Perhaps. You, you know what? You know what it is? Oh. It, it was there. In the first draft, it was oh. there. Obviously, <laughs> Alfred's such yeah. a seminal moment. Going to the public bar, listening to how Sean saved someone's life in the surf of Bali. You know, <laughs> that they were they were all there. And and my, my great admiration for, for, for Mr. McManus was obviously, you know, that was a chapter at least. Um, uh, you know, but it was nah, severely nah, cut nah, by nah. all the editors. And, and also, <laughs> <laughs> also <laughs> it was wrong because it wasn't Sean saving someone, it was Sean being saved. Um, well, I wasn't yeah, okay. to yeah, save yeah, somebody. I know, but, but, but it's my memoir. I remember it. <laughs> yes, it's it's as Matt, I was intrigued by the story about um, the reason that you came to Australia being for love. Basically, you followed a girl here. But then that girl didn't pick you up from the airport. No, it was terrible. I think I think our, it took nine months to get to get the kind of the de facto status to, to move over here. So our relationship, I reckon, had died. And I I, I wasn't surprised because the night before the night before I was about to fly out was like, are you sure it's a good idea you come? And I've gone, oh well, I'm kind of you know like like you know that moment in the cartoon when someone ju- they run off a cliff and they realise they run off a cliff and they're trying to struggle to get yes. back there. Yes, yes. Um, I, I was in that. Point. I came, I came, and, and that relationship lived on for. Uh, maybe a couple of months, and then and then we ended up, then ended up, oh, and then I started playing tennis with one of her friends, and that friend turned out to be the the the, the woman who I decided was the one I want to spend the rest of my life with, and we're still together twenty nine years on. Oh, That's so fantastic. the moral of that is, if you're casually dating someone, always mm. go and play tennis with their, their friend friends. just yes. in case. Just don't know, no, well, their friend might be the one you're supposed to be with. Well, well, also always be the dump one because that, mm. therefore you then you then get sympathy from their friends. That's the most important. Lesson. Oh, so uh, make sure that you're dumped know. by the friend, by the tennis mm. friend. Gosh, exactly. just smart tennis. You running tennis smart. down? Tennis, <laughs> tennis friends. <laughs> hey, Matt, the whole thing when um, Master Chef in particular um, took off, and you, and you wrote in this being being uh, recognised everywhere you went. That whole blow up situation from. Well, relatively unknown to just crazy stuff. How how was that? Look, look, look I've done I've done a show called My My Restaurant Rules. I've had yeah. a, I've had a snatch of that, and that and that, and it kind of went to my head. I mean, I've, I've thought about this. <laughs> I, I was I was a bit of a dickhead, you know. And but, but when it happened with MasterChef, it was such a surprise. And also, I was you know a good ten years old and a good ten years more sensible. And it was just like what was lovely about MasterChef is you know. People talk about fame, but it was more familiarity. Yeah, you'd, I'd, you'd walk, I'd walk down the street in Perth, and people would say, "Oh, morning, Matt. Morning, Matt." And you go, "Hi, how you going?" And they'd be with, be with my wife. She goes, "Do you know them?" And I go, "No, they just watch the show and they get uncomfortable <laughs> saying good morning." It's a that, that, that's a beautiful privilege. And then the next question would be, "Have you know?" They come up and say, and that we'd have they, they'd want a photo, and I go, "Where should I go?" And they tell me about a you know a great a, a great Fijian place out in the suburbs, and you go, "Wow, thank you so much." You go out there and eat. So. Yeah, no, it, it, it's that it's that whole thing of bizarrely you suddenly make a whole new raft of, of friends and acquaintances, which is beautiful. Yeah, my, my, it is. just my favourite thing to do with you, you know, being mm. that person is to walk into a restaurant with you and just like yes, actually unannounced. hearing people's sphincters tighten. Yes, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, and, and hearing the that on Matt, on their like, faces <laughs> is. <laughs> Terrifying. That was a little too graphic, oh Nathan. God. A little too graphic. Oh, is that Michael Winslow uh, in the room? <laughs> but you must be used to that reaction, that crestfallen. Oh no! I mean, they're happy and they're terrified all at once. Yeah, well, I, I think, I think, I think, and, and your your job then is to go. I'm so excited to be here. I've heard pretty good things about this dish. And what else do you recommend? And 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 you want them. You want them to have that moment of pride when they put something that they they know is really good, and you go, "Gee, that's delicious." It's a and, you know that that's a lovely thing to be able to do. So I think because I because I stopped reviewing fourteen years ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, that 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 kind of that kind of um, that kind of uh, is the man with the big stick kind of thing dissipated. Mm. And now I just love it because they because you you can automatically start from a, a point where you say, "What can I have? What do you recommend? What do you think?" And they get and they get excited because I'm excited, and, and that that's again you know that, that that's the great joy of meeting new people is the excitement that that I feel and they feel as well. That's beautiful. Well, it's a rollicking read. Everybody should um, grab a copy of Big Mouth or Nathan can read it to you if you like. I'll, be, I'll be doing a reading today at Forest Chase <laughs> um, from 10 a.m. <laughs> and Matt, the cover, you <laughs> yeah, look great unbelievably photo. handsome. We know you're a handsome dude great anyway, but that's photo. a great photo. And the, and the graphics are outstanding. Yeah.
Can I, can I tell you one thing? They say the camera doesn't lie, but gee, in the, right, the hands of the right photographer, <laughs> it certainly lies. No, you look amazing. <laughs> Tells a few white lies, that's all. Um, <laughs> it's great to catch up, Matt. Come yeah, to Perth mate, and see us again. We haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, I know. I know. I was, I was saying it's really unfair. It's one of my, my great joys is is coming and hanging with you and, and you taking me somewhere mm. really, really exciting. So I'm, I'm, let, 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 let's work that out. Next year, yep. let's do let's something. Let's make it happen. I want, an, I want another fancy pants party. Yeah, yeah oh, that was yeah, great. That was yeah, was that? Granted, some very special times, but not special enough to make, make it the, into the book. Make it into the book. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. I'm just reeling over what Harry Fitzgerald just told me. We were just talking right. about chips and our flavoured chips that we like, and then you said... Well, what one do you want first? Because I tried the Red Rock Deli Limited Edition. And I, it's got three cheeses, right? Mm. No, I can't bring a chip like that into my That's house because I, then I would have to mm. like spray mm. it with um, spray and wipe, crush it into powder and throw it in the bin <laughs> because I'd eat them all. But then you said the flavour you like more than that is what? <laughs> Samboy Atomic Tomato. I used to love them. So, yes, yes, you know, wait, I used to. What age? What age? Yes. Uh, I... Twen- in the 20s? In the 20s, I, I like did not e- think I that adults... I don't think I've adults, ever tasted them. I don't, didn't think that... Because I've never tasted them either. I didn't think that adults had a favourite flavour such as Atomic Tomato. I don't think... That's a child yeah, flavour, isn't you it? Yeah, I get over it, though, Harry. Have you, you not got over no. it? No. I'll still have a few here. And Atomic there. Tomato. <laughs> no, I'd never choose them now, but that was a moment I had to. So think there are about, other adults listening right now that love Atomic Tomato flavoured sandboy chips. Think about, about when you favorites. stopped eating Atomic Tomato. There's heaps out there. I, thought, I was so unfamiliar with it, I thought you were saying Tommy Tomato, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> which made it even more childlike. Oh, Harry, bring in a packet tomorrow. <laughs> Grow up. We just had chip chat before, um, Sean. Chip chat, yes. yes. Well, we were talking about chips. Um, we got a couple of messages on chips. Um, somebody apparently makes a Vegemite sandwich and puts Atomic mm. Samboy into the Vegemite I can sandwich. See that. Yeah, I'd, Atomic that... Tomato into it. Is that right, Sam? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard of Marie many people. Fuller. <laughs> Marie, Marie, what are you doing Fuller. with your life? Marie Fuller. Vegemite, I know many people who put atomic the chips in. Yeah, this but not sandwich. Atomic Tomato with. Anyway, and someone else said that uh, there's a better chip. Yeah, Alana Anderson says beef randang special edition chips. Two thumbs up. Oh, but you don't want to get hooked on a, on a special get, edition because then they leave. I can't really you know give my I mean? heart to Aldi products because sometimes they're just transient. <laughs> and like, so say suddenly I find something and then I know I can't have the rest yeah. of my life. Panic will set in yeah. for me. I, I don't get, like, I get it. We have abandonment issues as it is. And we, if we're abandoned by <laughs> a chip like, like, you know, like, like, like a, bit, a garlic bread or something, I'll be like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? It's not even a garlic are bread. Are you kidding me? I'm single and now I have no garlic bread. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Okay, so we have various amounts of cash plus tickets to see Monet in Paris at Crown. Up for grabs right now. Um, just got to locate the Monets on our board. Brett's the first man to have a crack at this. Good morning, Brett. Good morning, guys. How hey, are buddy. We? We're, great, we're wonderful, Brett. Brett. So, Brett, we've got a board here. It's basically a gallery. There mm. are 12 different squares on there, and there are three Monets with money mm, hiding behind them. That's what you want. All right, okay. we just need one number off you, and let's hopefully you'll score the Monets. 11, please. 11. Legs 11, Nathaniel. 11. 11. Oh. What have we, Nathan? It's not a Monet, guys. It is... Um, oh, no, it is a Monet. It is Jerusalem Flowers by Claude Monet. Wow. <laughs> oh, and what has he won, Nathan? He has won... Are you ready? A family passed a Monet in Paris. Okay, so that's good, isn't it? Do you want some money? Brett, that's you. Brett, are you with us? Yes. Okay, guys, yes, you're, you're waiting with bated breath. Do you want some money? Yes. Oh, I do want the money. Okay. Would you like eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars. Oh wow. Eight hundred dollars, Brett. That's ridiculous. Thank you very. You didn't have to do anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, two wow. eighties. That's. How, what, that's, a, what a way to start. That was hard work, actually. <laughs> oh, Brett, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's off to Monet in Paris. Take you really got 800 bucks. We move to Shamim know. from Rockingham. Morning, Shamim. Hi. Hi, Shamim. Okay, so, so, via calculations, there is um, $200, 200 left bucks. on the board. That's right. Yeah. Um, and uh, square 11 is gone, but what number would you like from 1 to 12? Uh, 9, thank you. 9. 9. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Just on the angle. Right. Number nine. Oh, uh, it's not a Manet. It's a Salvador Dali, The Persistence of Marinari, the oh. one with the melting clocks. Of course. And you, you win absolutely nothing, I'm afraid, oh, Shamim. Sorry. That's sorry. Okay. Thank sorry. you for playing. Best of the future. Readers in Mount Lawling, morning, Reeds. Good morning. Hi, Rita. Right. What number would you like, Rita? Number eight. Number, number eight. eight. Right next to number nine. Yes, it is, Nathan, traditionally. All right. Okay. Guys. Don't mean to cause a fuss. Yes. <laughs> Spring by the CM. It's a Monet. <gasps> That's a Monet. What's Rita one? One hundred dollars plus a double pass to Monet in Paris. One hundred bucks. There you go, Rita. Yes, pretty. All right. <laughs> Beautiful work. Okay. Nathan, what's the mass leaves us with? Well, there's still one more Monet left. So, <laughs> uh, King, Carry hello. Uh, hello, hi. Okay, hi, Kinga. We know there's one Monet left. Can you locate it? Knowing that squares 8, 9 and 11 are gone, which one would you like? I will go for number one, please. Number, number one. one. Number one. <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, my God. Can I just say? Yeah. You're all amazing because that there is Basile and Camille. It's a Monet. It's a Monet. It's a Monet. Monet. What's she won? That's a double pass to Monet in Paris. All right. Oh, he's got a double pass. And and on the cash. There's still cash available. We move on to Claire in Hammy Hill. Morning, Claire. Morning. Hello. Hi, Claire. All right, Claire. Um, Hi. What number would you like? Number 10, please. Number, number 10. 10. Seems to be the area, Nate. All right, we have another Monet. <laughs> a double pass to Monet in Paris. What's that That's one called? That one is Woman with a Parasol. <laughs> Is that it's a woman with so a So you got free tickets, Claire. That's all yours. Okay. We go to Mel in Bicton. Hi, Mel. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Mel. Mel, there's one more cash amount left. We're trying to find it. Where do you think it might be? Oh, number four, please. Number four. Number four. It's a Monet. Which well, one is it? Won? Which one is it? That one is the Monera Garden at the Bordeguera. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> $100 plus double pass to Monet in Paris. You That's all the money. Cash. Well done, Mel. Awesome. Thank Great you. job. All right. Monet in Paris at Le Grand Palais at Crown. I'm going to check it out tonight, so I'll be able to tell you all oh, about awesome. it Good tomorrow. Job. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. $500 up for grabs tomorrow when we do Beefed Up Bangers, oh, speeding up good. songs oh, from Harvey Beef. I had this morning. Come on, they sharpen great. up. I mean, Lil, Lil, Boofang. Lil Boofang is very obviously Lil Boofang, even what at a high speed. What yeah. about Rush? Yeah, I know, right? Mm. Troy Sivan. Yeah. Please. Come on. Please. Uh, uh, Zoe Ventura tomorrow. Chicago. Yes. Yes. And all that jazz. She's playing the lead. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, Ross. Hey guys, heard a um, great out of context line by Sean this morning. Let me play it for you. That's a lot of poo in your body there, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's the first time we've said that sentence on air and one of the proudest moments. <laughs> so he's, he's actually he's said that off air to his mum. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.